All right, we are finally looking at the Maxwell from Odyssey today. You guys have been very enthusiastic in asking me where this video was. I really appreciate your patience. I'm over the initial hype and I have logged countless hours on this thing. There's a ton of information in this video today, so just sit back, get comfortable, and I did put chapter markers in here if you're looking for something specific. Okay, big headlines first. Number one, this is the best overall sounding wireless headset I've heard in almost every use case. I wish that told the whole story, but it doesn't. Two, this is for me a vast improvement over the pin rows in basically every metric. Odyssey did a great job of addressing the opportunities from that headset. In three, this mic has one really impressive party trick, but in terms of overall quality, it's tuned really warm, so opinion is definitely going to play a factor here. I've included a ton of mic tests so you can decide for yourself. It comes in two flavors. One is priced at $299.99, that does PlayStation, Mac, PC, and Switch. And one is priced at $329, and that adds Xbox support and an embedded Dolby Atmos license. Price-wise, this this is right up there with the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless, so I will be making comparisons throughout the video, and I haven't got my hands on a pair of the Turtle Beach Stealth Pros yet, but they are on the way. So first impressions are very strong. They immediately feel like quality in the hand. They look and feel like a high-end pair of Odyssey headphones as opposed to a gaming headset. They have a heft to them when you take them out of the box. They're immediately heavier than any of the other wireless gaming headsets I've been using lately at 508 grams with the mic attached, and I thought that was going to be a big problem. I have their LCDX headphone, and it doesn't see a lot of action simply because the weight at around 625 grams is too heavy for me. Compare that to the weight of my normal dailies for gaming, the Arctis Nova 7 with aftermarket pads at 366 grams, or the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless with stock pads at 339 grams, and I was really skeptical that these were going to be wearable as daily drivers. I don't know how they managed to balance these headphones, but these are not uncomfortable for me at all. I've worn these for four or five hour stretches. I don't get any fatigue. I don't get any hot spots. Those are like small little specific pain points somewhere in your head. I don't get any of that. It's really surprising for sure. The cups themselves are ABS plastic, but I actually had to email them to confirm that if that tells you anything about the quality. These do show oil after a bit of handling, so you'll need to keep a microfiber cloth handy if you're into keeping like that clean aesthetic. The yokes here are aluminum, headband is spring steel. Both the yokes and the swivel have this high quality dampened feel to the adjustments. There's no slide adjustment here though. It's a suspension style headband, but it's presumably faux leather instead of elastic. It mounts on three points on either side and you don't have to unscrew these screws. The holes just slip on over them. These can accommodate some really large heads, and I actually wear these offset, higher on one side of the strap than the other, but it doesn't create an imbalance at all. Versus the pin rows, there is like no clamping force here at all. It's a completely different experience in terms of comfort. Everything for control and connection lives on the left ear cup. On the outside is a big mic mute switch and a power button. Along the edge, you've got volume, chat mix balance, a 3.5 millimeter jack, USB-C, mic and a toggle for the mic noise suppression. The ear pads here are super comfy and like most of Odyssey's pads, they're angled being much thicker in the rear. The opening is a large oval. I get 60 by 45 millimeter on the internal dimensions, about 20 millimeters deep too. I can't really see any reason why someone would need to replace these with aftermarket pads, but they're easy to remove and replace nonetheless. They just twist off. These are planar magnetic drivers versus dynamic. They're 90 millimeters here and this is a closed back design. These do pretty well with passive noise cancellation, but there is no active noise canceling here. Personally, I found ANC to be the unnecessary add-on of late 2022. It drove the prices up on some of the flagship stuff, and in the case of like the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless, it left us with these little nubs inside the cup. I didn't personally find these uncomfortable, but a lot of people did, so we don't have any of that to contend with here. Getting into feature set, it's a little unusual because we do have Bluetooth 5.3 here, and with the sizable amount of codec options, including LDAT and a couple others I've never even heard of. There is no AppDex low latency support here, but some of the new codecs can support low latency connections for like mobile gaming, over Bluetooth, that's just gonna be really dependent on the host device that you're using. The catch with the Bluetooth here is that you cannot use it simultaneously with the wireless connection. Like you can't use the dongle and Bluetooth to play audio at the same time. You can do that with Bluetooth and a wired connection, but we'll talk more about that wired connection here in just a sec. So what happens here is that these connect to the Bluetooth and to the dongle at the same time, and then you toggle back and forth between the two, but there's no manual switch. It happens automatically and it prioritizes Bluetooth. What this means in real life is that if any, no notification goes off on your phone, you will hear it in the headset temporarily disabling your game audio. If you pick up your phone and start scrolling during a lobby, if that app you're using has any sound at all, it will pull focus away from the game until you're finished with your phone, and then it takes a little bit to go back. For me, this is handy if I'm gaming and I'm waiting on a really important notification or phone call to come through, but if not, it's just really annoying, so I wind up cutting the Bluetooth connection to the phone anytime I'm gaming. This seems like something that could be addressed in a future firmware, and I really hope they do. You do have chat 
mix here and you've got dual driver support so you can assign your chat or your music app to the alternate driver and then control the balance between the two right on the headset. Ergonomically, the on-head controls are in a really good spot and the chat mix has been simplified from the previous headsets. You no longer have to click and roll, you just roll. It's nice. Okay, moving on to mic quality. Maxwell has two different mic systems at work here. It's got the detachable boom mic that you're hearing right now. Then it also has a beamform mic array inside the headset itself. The beamform mics kick in automatically whenever the boom arm is not installed. And they're definitely not going to win any awards for quality, but they will do in a pinch if you need to take a call. And I love the inclusion here. They just provide a little flexibility if you're somewhere and you're wearing this headset in an environment where the boom arm look is just not it. As for this boom mic, it is a notable step up from the Penrose, especially in terms of just overall level versus some of the other stuff out there i'm not getting any wireless transmission sounds here no crackling no weird artifacting and the vocal range is pretty decent you are hearing this now without any of the noise filtering applied at all which we'll talk about in just a sec but the trade-off for me with this mic is it sounds pretty boomy it doesn't sound like it's handling plosives very well and the overall vocal comes across as stuffy to me in the high end and it really makes me wish that we had some mic eq options in the software and that can make it a little challenging to compare the mic on maxwell to the mics on other flagship wireless stuff because most manufacturers are going for a vocal that's really bright and really clear to help it cut through the mix when you're trying to hear your call outs over everything else this is the mic on the Penrose that you're hearing right now, and this was definitely a low point for this headset. I think it's pretty obvious that Maxwell is an improvement here. Now you're hearing the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless with no processing from the Sonar software. So this is what you would hear right out of the box or on a console or anywhere where you're not going to have access to the software. People beat this mic up pretty bad in the comments of that video, but to me, it still sounds up there. You have to remember that most wireless mics out there will still get washed by even an entry-level wired mic. You do get some wireless transmission noise here, some obvious compression, and in general, the overall tone of the vocal just isn't there like it is on the Maxwell, but this sounds considerably less stuffy to me. So, Maxwell, more stuffy, more clean. Arctis, less clean, less stuffy. I've gone back and forth on this a lot, but the Corsair Virtuoso XT may actually still be the best wireless gaming mic out there. It's just pretty tough to argue with the overall tonality here. I find that it works really well for my voice. The trade-off is that you do get some transmission noise in here, but it just sounds really natural in comparison to a lot of the other wireless options, and I like the overall tune here better than I do the Maxwell. The big problem with the Virtuoso is that as time has gone on, it's kind of a one-trick pony with basically the mic being the star of the show. The sound quality, the comfort, the overall design, they're just not stacking up to the competition because everybody's doing a lot of things really well at the top end. So the Maxwell, very clear transmission, great levels, but overall kind of a boomy and stifled sound that would definitely benefit from some top end EQ. But it does have one really cool party trick. It's got some insane background noise filtering technology built right into the headset that I've never seen before. Somebody sent me a video from a channel called Gadgetry Tech. I'll link his video in the description. His name's Joe. Really, really solid audio reviews. Definitely go check him out. He ran a full-on vacuum cleaner in the background of his sound test, and it filtered out nearly all of it. So I had to see if this was legit. All right, so right next to me, I have an aging Dyson Animal vacuum. It's not new, and it's certainly not quiet, and there's currently no noise filtering on this mic. I'm just going to pop this thing on and see what it sounds like. All right, coming as a surprise to absolutely no one, it sounds as though there's a vacuum cleaner running right next to me. I am going to go ahead and turn this filter on low, which you can do right on the headset. So looking at the levels there, it looked like it took just a second to learn it, and then it pretty much wiped it out. I'm assuming you're going to be able to hear this back as I talk. It's going to let some of that gate through, but... I mean, when I'm not talking, it's essentially flatlined. That is very impressive. I'm going to bump this up to high and see what happens. <laughs> I'm not seeing much of a difference on the level. I don't know if we're going to be able to hear much of a difference here. I don't know how much is coming through at this point or how bad the vocal is sounding. So we'll hear it all back and play back. But initially, I wanted to use my Ninja Blender and make a protein shake to do this, but that blender is like two to three times as loud as this is right here, and it still let a little bit of that through. It really chewed up the vocal pretty bad. It just wasn't as impressive as the vacuum test right here, but here's a pretty clicky keyboard as well, so we can hear what that sounds like with the filtering on high. Overall, uh, pretty impressive. Kudos to Joe for a great audio test. Go over and check out Gadgetry Tech and drop a like on his video. That's an extreme case, and the more noise the filter has to work to overcome, the lower the quality of the overall vocal is going to be, at least according to my testing. But using that filter under normal circumstances, where you just have like 
regular background noise going on provides you with a completely silent background when you're not speaking so you're not going to have to worry about using push to talk with the filtering when you activate even the low level you get more mic gain and more compression you can see this in the waveforms i prefer the sound of the vocal running noise filter on low versus off this filtering works with the beam forms as well just to a much less effective degree and the beauty part here is that unlike products that need software like sonar or synapse to get access to these features or using something like nvidia broadcast all the processing is occurring right here inside the headset whether you're on a call using it bluetooth console gaming it works everywhere no software needed the same holds true of the eq you have a pc or a phone app that allows you to control the configuration and then save the settings to the headset there are a couple important and annoying caveats here too currently on the pc side you cannot set the custom eqs for the four custom eq spots you can select them from the desktop and actually on the headset itself as well once you have them set up the mobile version of the app does allow you to set custom eq presets but you can only access the mobile app if the usb dongle is disconnected from the pc or your console this is obviously way more annoying on the console side because you're generally sitting a lot further away from your device so you got to get up and go pull the dongle out to access the eq but the thing you may have picked up on is that you can't access the EQ while you're listening to the audio source that you need to EQ. I mean, EQing music is fine. You just play it back on Bluetooth, but tuning for footsteps in your console game is gonna be a real challenge. In addition to all that, connecting to the EQ on mobile, even if you do everything you're supposed to, is still very hit or miss. Of course, you can use a software-based third-party EQ on the PC side, but you can't save that to the headset for use elsewhere. The good news is that Odyssey has been pretty good so far about pushing new software and firmware updates, and they have confirmed that the functionality to set your custom EQ on the PC should be coming in just a few days. Like it could be out by the time you see this video. Whenever they decide to drop that, I will follow up with a little short to see how they did. Now I know that's a lot, but all that is to say that if you're content to run one of their baked in EQ options, you're good to go. It's only when you start talking about setting up a custom EQ that we run into headaches. The standard Odyssey preset is their preferred tune. Bass and treble boost are both pretty obvious. Immersive is a V shape that's gonna prioritize bass and highs over mids. This works great for single player games. The competition and footsteps EQs are for FPS games, but different games do footsteps differently. So that's probably where you're gonna want that custom EQ. All right, sound quality. And I guess the big headline here is that these are the best sounding wireless headset I've heard yet. Now to quantify that a bit, the two big entries that I haven't heard are the Masters and Dynamics MD20 and the new Turtle Beach Stealth Pro, which I've been hearing really good things about. In so many wireless headset reviews, I say that they sound great for gaming and that they're passable for music. The Maxwell sounds great great for gaming and great for music. Overall, we've got a pretty balanced or neutral sound here with a little bit of emphasis in the low end, but these are not bass cannons, at least not in their stock EQ. If you are that user that's a heavy gamer, but audio is also a hobby, or you're an audiophile with a minor in gaming, this is your wireless headset. Plain and simple. I normally cycle through a few wireless earbuds or a Bluetooth over your headphone when I'm in the studio. And now I wear the Maxwell 90% of the time, unless I'm specifically editing or just taking some of my nice wired audio file headphones out for a test drive. To clarify that a bit, it's not that you can't use these for editing. You most certainly can. It's just that when I'm doing professional work, I like to use a headphone I know really, really well. So the results are gonna be more predictable. Speaking purely sound quality versus the Penrose, which previously held the crown for best sounding wireless for me, it's a pretty tough fight. Maxwell has got 90 millimeter drivers versus 100 millimeter drivers in the Penrose. And the best way I can say it is that the Maxwell comes off as less forceful. The Penrose sounds great. It can just be a lot. It's really concentrated. You get a lot of bass. The treble can be kind of hot or kind of shouty. It's where you kind of wince when you hear a certain high note. I don't get that here. Maxwell is smoother on all fronts. The soundstage feels a little bigger. Like certain sounds can feel a little more floaty or out in the distance. Treble is never offensive to me. Even in bass boost EQ mode, I still get a little less slam than I get on the Penrose. Now, please don't interpret that as the Maxwell being bass light. It's not. It's just that the Penrose edges it in that particular category. It could come down to tuning. There's still plenty of bass here. And it's clean, clean bass. It's not bloaty, it's not boomy, it's not stepping all over something else in the mids that you're trying to hear, like on a lesser headphone. It is super dialed in here. But if you still need more, you can dig into those custom EQ modes. Odyssey headphones are incredibly versatile in how much you can shape the sound with EQ. The LCDX is a $1,200 headphone. I don't like the stock tuning there at all. My EQ has a crazy bass boost on it and it delivers that with no distortion. Another thing worth mentioning here is the wireless background noise, just like that general constant hiss you sometimes get on wireless stuff. 
that's not here. The noise floor on Maxwell is crazy low. If you are hearing some kind of hiss or background noise, you probably just have side tone enabled on your mic. Just turn it off and enjoy. You know a gaming headset has to be crazy good if I start off by talking about music and then talk about gaming, because if it's good at all that stuff, it should be a given that it's very proficient in gaming as well. If you can hear everything all at once, clearly, without it being muddy or distorted, that's a win for chaotic FPS gaming, and you get that here. Tuning can play a big role as well. You like enough impact or bass to give weight to certain things, like to get your heart rate up or dial up the immersion, but not so much that it's stepping on important audio cues. You also get that here. In fact, for single player gaming, Maxwell is incredible. It's only when we get down to the drippiest sweat of competitive FPS that we start to see holes in its game. And even then they're minor. The soundstage or how big the world around you feels is not as big as you'd find on an open back headphone or even on certain IEMs, though both of those solutions are generally wired. Soundstage can allow you to judge distance in a game if the audio engine is really good. Now, some players put a real value on that. For other players, the only information they need is which direction to point their gun. So I wanna be really clear about this next part. Maxwell is really good for FPS gaming, but at this price point, we're really splitting hairs here. We're talking narrow, narrow performance margins here. But for me, Maxwell is not the best at rapidly acquiring enemies in game based solely on directional cues. You may have heard this called imaging. For me, it's edged out slightly in this department by the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless. On the current firmware, I can't get my copy to take and hold a custom EQ from the mobile app on my iPhone. So the idea that it's not the hands down best for FPS performance for me, could just be a tuning issue. This is Odyssey we're talking about. So I'd have a really difficult time believing that this was due to any inherent design flaw in the drivers themselves. I know there's been some back and forth with Odyssey and ratings.com about potential phasing issues. I'll link the statements and the updates from both sides down in the description, but I can tell you that on my review copy, I haven't noticed any sort of channel imbalance. The Arctis Novo Pro Wireless by sound comparison is just really trouble forward. It's sharp. There's enough bass to fill in the blanks, but it's not the warm, rich bass that you get with Maxwell. I don't find them as flexible as the Maxwell when it comes down to how they respond to EQing. A lot of people in the comments of that review just said they sounded straight up bad. I just can't get behind that. Based on what I've experienced from wireless headsets, they were second only to the Penrose. There's loads of detail in the highs and the mids. I find them great for competitive FPS. I thought about this a lot, and the easiest and most careful way for me to say this is that in my very humble opinion, the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless is 10% better at imaging in FPS games where the Maxwell is 50% better at everything else. You're simply never going to get an Arctis headset to deliver the same musical experience that you get in the Maxwell. I do not think that using the Maxwell is gonna put you at any sort of competitive disadvantage in FPS. And I'm sorry if my take confuses your purchase decision. These are really expensive devices, so I wanna be as thorough as I can. I could also completely retract that entire sentiment once I have access to custom EQs again, and I can really dial it in. Over on the console side, on the PS5, it's all the same notes. You get more than enough maximum volume here and it works great with the Tempest 3D audio. That said, it works with every spatial audio software. And of course, the mic noise filters work over there as well. Like Odyssey's previous headsets, there's no real advantage to using the Maxwell with the 3.5 wired connection unless your device only offers a wired headphone jack. The amp here is actually inside the headset. So that means even if you're running over 3.5 millimeter, you're still gonna have to be powered on anyway. Two, if you're trying to feed this thing off a wireless DAC amp set up on your desk, chances are you're just gonna distort it because you're gonna be coming out of an amp and into another amp. If you're gonna run wired, USB-C would be the way to go. The wireless connection already supports 2496, but a wired connection will always be superior. It's not night and day, but if you wanna be reassured that you're squeezing the absolute best performance you can out of this, then running USB-C at 2496 is the way to go. The battery life here is an astonishing 80 hours, and I have found that to be accurate. You can get a 25 percent quick charge or roughly 20 hours in 20 minutes. Zero to full takes about two hours. The range is some of the best I've seen in any wireless headset and the connection is bulletproof 99.9% .9 of the time. Every once in a really long while, I'll get like a little blip that sounds like digital distortion. Being honest, it's barely worth mentioning, but I like to report on anything I find. So for me, there's no need to belabor the price here. These are expensive and rightfully so. This is the wireless headset for someone that prioritizes audio quality over anything. Someone that's still wants gaming features, but doesn't want something that overtly looks 
or sounds like a gaming headset. I'm always gonna be a fan when a company takes criticism of a product on the nose and comes back with something that doesn't just address the opportunities, but improves on them to this degree. Maxwell looks, feels, and sounds class, and it's unmistakably Odyssey in its design language, which I love. This looks and feels like you're wearing an Odyssey headphone, where the Penrose and the Mobius just don't. It has top tier sound quality that responds really well to EQ, better than decent mic quality, build quality, comfort despite being on the heavy side, insane battery life, and a pretty healthy stack of gamer-centric features. It makes a great Bluetooth headphone too, as long as you don't need active noise canceling. I would have really liked to see this bundled with a nice hard case to make it a little more travel-friendly, but I guess it fits any case that's designed for the LCD headphone. There's not much out there that's gonna compete with the excellent hot swap battery system on the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless. It remains the best battery solution for wireless headsets, although 80 hours on the Maxwell is still pretty insane. The functionality of the base station is another thing to consider on the Arctis, particularly the ability to route a signal out to something like a Go XLR. The Nova Pro does this, the Maxwell doesn't. Said as plainly as I can, if you don't need support for the Go XLR, I would personally go with the Maxwell. You'll just have to assess your own needs. And I'm not letting them off the hook for the current state of their software. I'm happy to see that so far they've been committed to improving that experience. It feels really clunky right now, but if they can nail that part, Odyssey is gonna be a real problem for gaming companies making audio products. Boy, this was a heavy lift today. If you got any value out of this video, please consider leaving a like or subscribe to the channel if you're not already. If you wanna talk shop or you need any kind of specific gear recommendations, the best place to do that is in my private Discord. I will link that down in the description. That's it for today. I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.